Hey, friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you four ways of making automation writing in Logic Pro way easier. So automation is your way of programming parameters of the channel strip, the instrument, the plugins to change over time throughout your production. So maybe you want a track to go up in level or down in level. Maybe you want a plugin like reverb or ascend to reverb to adjust over time. Maybe you want a track to mute at specific moments. You can do all of this using automation, but I do think that plenty of us Logic Pro users find writing automation in Logic Pro to be kind of cumbersome, right? It feels like you have to do a lot of clicking, a lot of dragging. And that's why I want to show you today four ways of making writing automation in Logic Pro just so much simpler, so much easier. So let's get into it. On screen, I have a riff that I've been playing around with. And I actually started out in the live loop script. So you can see there's a variety of little riffs and I've compiled them into one idea here in the tracks area. And I'm holding option and pressing L to switch to the live loops grid, hold option and press N to switch to the tracks area or hold option and press B to see both side by side. But we're gonna focus on the tracks area. So I'll play the riff for you just so we got something to listen to. Take a listen. We're going to focus on one of the tracks in this project so we can dig into these four ideas. So number one, right out of the gate, if there's nothing else that you take away from this video, just one idea, I hope it's this. By default, for writing automation, you have to do a lot of menu diving. To do this, you would of course reveal automation view in the tracks area by pressing the button right here or pressing A on your Mac's keyboard. And of course, let's say I wanna write some volume automation for this backwards piano track right here. In fact, I'll actually mute the other tracks. If I wanted to write some volume automation for this track, I would have to click on this menu and start diving through the various sub menus to find volume or pan or anything else. So if we go to the main sub menu, you can see volume right here. And then there's options for volume, like absolute or relative. Pan has absolute or relative. Solo, mute, pan spread, etc. So I'll select volume absolute. Whereas if I wanted to select a plugin parameter, let's say for ensemble, and maybe I wanted to affect the mix control, I have to go find the ensemble sub menu find the mix control and then select. There's a way easier, faster way. And that's by going to the mix menu at the top. By clicking on this mix menu, there's an option called auto select automation parameter in read mode. You can see I have it enabled on my system. When it's disabled, Logic Pro rolls the default way, the way I just described by diving through menus when automation view is in view. However, by selecting mix, going down to auto select automation parameter in read mode and then clicking forevermore, this option will be selected and check it out. Now, if I want to select the fader to make fader adjustments over time using automation, I can just click on the fader and the parameter in view here changes to volume. And then I can start writing automation just by clicking and making my adjustments, right? Now, if I undo, Maybe I want to automate the pan control. Well, just click on the pan control and boom, it's in focus or mute. Or again, that mix control in ensemble. So simple, right? So much easier. So I'll select volume. I'll make sure to option click this to zero and I can just start clicking with my pointer tool, make adjustments and we can take a listen to this backwards piano quickly. It's a beautiful thing, right? So much easier than menu diving. All right, I'll undo and we'll move on to number two here. Number two in our list of ways to make automation writing so much faster and easier in Logic Pro is to use the marquee tool. I have plenty of videos about the marquee tool. It is a mouse tool, can be found in the two menus at the top here. We have the left click tool, which in this case is the pointer tool, the command click tool, in this case is the marquee tool. I'll leave it set as the command click tool, which means if I hold command, I bring up the crosshair symbol for the marquee tool. While we have automation in view here, 
if I make a selection and then click on my selection, it looks like I've created two automation points or nodes, but in fact, I've created four. That's the beauty of the marquee tool. You create not one, not two, not three, but four automation points, which you can quickly and easily start making adjustments. Boom, just like that. So I could create a ramping effect, ramping out. Maybe I just adjust these two points. Maybe I want to get rid of one of these points by double clicking. And now we've got this ramping down and ramping up. It's just so versatile, so much easier. I personally rarely grab a fader or a control and start writing automation using the other automation modes. I just make marquee selections. So I'll select these automation points by using my pointer tool. I've clicked, dragged to make a selection and I press delete to get rid of them. And number three on our list is to enable snap automation to the grid. So if you go to the snap menu right here, there's an option called snap automation and currently it's active on my session. Now, of course, this depends on the style of production project that you're working on. Maybe this makes sense for your project, maybe it doesn't, but I personally tend to find I want automation to land exactly on bars and beats. Instead of me trying to click and then drag and try to line it up with a bar or beat, I'd much rather logic just do it for me. So let's undo, go to that snap menu, go to snap automation and active. So now I've activated automation. I'll use my marquee tool to make a selection. And once again, when I click, hold and drag, you can see this automation point is snapping to the bar, to the beat, to a beat, so on and so forth. All right, so number four in making writing automation easier, faster in Logic Pro, specifically when you wanna create a pattern of automation is by copying and pasting automation. So many of us may desire the behavior of telling Logic, hey, I just want to a specific pattern. I want it to be in a triangle wave or a sine wave or a square or anything in between. And you wish you could just like stamp it onto the screen, right? You wish you could just say like, hey, just create a square pattern back and forth, back and forth from top to bottom, one bar to the next. You know, bar one, right up here. Bar two, all the way down here. You see, I have to make another automation point. It's just really cumbersome. It's annoying, right? There's an easier way. While you can't tell logic at this moment in time, make this pattern for this duration, you can quickly establish it yourself. So I'm just going to make my selection of automation points, press delete, set this back to zero, and I'll automate the panning of this track. So I'll use my marquee tool, holding command, and I'll click and drag, create my four automation points. I've now set the panning to the left, and now I could do the same for the right. Boom, so it's gonna pan left to right. So now I wanna copy and paste this pattern across the entire performance, easy. So let's select, hold command and press C, and then place the playhead at the bar that you want to paste this automation hold command and press V. All right, so now the playhead has jumped ahead one bar because we've selected one bar of automation. So I can just hold command, press V, 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 and V. Boom, done. All right, so you'll say, Chris, awesome, but that's plenty easy, right? Of course, you can quickly and easily establish a pattern left to right, but what about something a little more nuanced? No problem. I'll set this back. And this time I'll use my marquee tool to maybe make a selection to about there. I'll get rid of this point and this point. I'll drag this down, make sure it lines up with the grid. And you know, I'll just draw it in one at a time here. Okay, so we go from left to right, back to left at bar two here. So let me select my automation points, command and C again, place the playhead at bar two and paste using command and V. Booyah. And you can do this for any degree of pattern. So I'll press T to bring up the mouse click tools. I'll set my command click tool to the pencil tool. Okay, right, so I'm making a 
weird squirrely bit of automation. We'll leave it at that. But I'll make the selection, Command and C, and just start pasting it across, right? And you can see it's kind of fallen off, so let me undo. And I just want to make sure to select this guy right here. Command and C. There we go. Everybody lands on the bar as I wanted it to. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to WideLogicProRules.com here on the channel and on the website. And be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, and templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. I'll talk to you later. Take care.